Hello, everybody. Welcome back to some Dungeons and Dragons with the Wednesday crew. Appreciate you being here and uh, checking us out and whatnot. We are wrapping up a few uh, a few loose ends that the group has had. They've they've gotten distracted by by many many things along the way, but tonight should be a finale for all that and the beginning of a brand new adventure. But before we go into any of that, how y'all doing tonight? Everyone doing okay? Y'all doing okay out there? Oh, pretty yeah. good. Pretty good. I could, yeah. I could lie and say no, but I'm yeah. doing okay. Yeah, I'm doing I okay. Could, I could lie and say yes. I'm doing great. We have one excited person, one depressed person, a Moogle, and um, a regular guy. Rich, I'm going to say you, your expression was pretty regular there. Normally you're more, got more gusto going on, man. I'm doing fantastic. I'm having a great night. Usually the more regular, the more sad. <laughs> Everybody's just sad and depressed tonight. Well, hopefully this changes throughout the night when we see how things uh things wrap up. Cause it ain't uh it's not gonna be just a walk in the park as usual. I think last time y'all said it be Insight. I you know what we I'm gonna say you, you passively got a twenty and you you think I'm telling the truth. So I, that's there right. you go. That's not how that works. Hey, it is it is right, right now it is. No, no dice got, it's deception. <laughs> all right. Now, I, I told you all this before, but I want to say it again because everyone in the audience understands. So our group currently has no ability to gain inspiration, which really throws a wrench into how some, something Sal brought up that I was going to run the game. So tonight we're just, I'm going to play by that, but I got to come up with a workaround for that. But they're not supposed to gain inspiration. So we're going to run with that tonight. I so inspiration. that being said, who wants to do a charity recap? Anyone want to talk about when we we're down last time? Charity recap. This isn't UNICEF, Jamie. <laughs> if yeah, no one wants to do it, I could say I can just sum it up real fast. It's th up to y'all. This is not a go off by the opinions of Cloak and da or Stagger, but I heard um, UNICEF's a pretty scummy organization. You know, I'm, it's gonna make me sound real dumb. I actually don't know what UNICEF is. Is that like some like OSHA style thing or? Uh, it's like charity to like children throughout the world. Oh, they go around these little uh. Kind things like at Halloween time, foundation. and you're supposed to put uh, money in there instead of candy. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. I've never so seen that. Ronald McDonald House. Oh, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Now I know what UNICEF is, and I don't honestly don't know why we're talking about this. I need a recap. Damn it! Who wants to recap? Anyone? No one. Mm. All right, I did it. All right, so we're chilling oh, at the ahead, Wizard's house, unless Baka wants to do it. No, no, go ahead. Rick. We're gonna knock this bad boy up. We're gonna knock this bad boy up. So we're chilling at the wizard's house. You know, I'm I'm getting a rock. Bach is getting a stove. Um, we're hanging out. No, you can stop there. That's the only part that matters. We go to bed. We wake up to see a bunch of spoons and forks attacking Augie. <laughs> and then we run in and we get our asses, like... Well, some rocked. of us. Oh, Augie and I get our... Arthur and I get our asses rocked by these uh, spoons and forks. Um, Sal... Destroys them all for the most part. My Baka just kind of levitates around and yells at Hell them. Hell yeah! Um, and then finally, the wizard dude cast like some electricity spell that destroyed the rest of them. Um, and we got our uh, we got our uh, companions, our new companions. We got stove. What's the stove's name, Baka? Stovey. And we also got a rock. Uh, if you guys remember, and the rock seems to win. Uh, we got these companions. Uh. Because the wizard was transmuting them for us as a gift for us turning him from a sheep back to a person. Thank you. Okay, it's yeah. That, that... And now we, we took a quick rest and we're going to head and we're going to meet with these wolves and the town people and they're going to set a deal and then we're going to party and get drunk in EORIP. You're missing a big plot point, Rick. Oh, shit. As we woke up from our nap, we had this crazy ass dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of us lost some abilities. And we're some not of quite us sure. gained some stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yeah, what, what'd you lose? Let's go down the list. What'd you lose, Richard? I lost. Um, that's a great question. Um, I lost my ability to put anything down uh, on paper, whether it be handwriting, foot writing, feet writing. Pun writing, I cannot, I can no longer uh, put pen to paper. Mm hmm, mm hmm. All right. And uh, Bacaluda, what, what, what about you? Did you lose something? 
No. I gained an impeccable fashion sense. Uh, Sal, do you agree that she's gained an impeccable fashion sense? No. <laughs> no, that's uh, very much more honest and accurate. Y'all know what you're talking about. I look great. All right, what about you, uh, Arthur? Did you gain something or lose something? I have no idea. I lost something. That's all I know. Yeah, yours is a little more tricky to determine, but I guess once you decide to pick a way to go, it'll become more clear if you're the guy picking the way. And Sal, did you? I think you lost something too. What'd you lose? I lost something very important to me. No, he's normal. It's fine. I'm a <laughs> druid that can't be creative anymore. No, well, let's be honest. But he didn't lose much. <laughs> He lost his creativity. Something was stolen from all of you. Very, <laughs> Sorry, very strange. And right after a dream, a memory that you all had, that you, uh, it was from your childhood. It was like partial dream and partial, oh shit, this really happened. Of you sneaking into a carnival and you didn't have a ticket. And you got caught. And you woke up. Suddenly you're missing stuff. Probably a connection. I don't know. Who knows, right? All that it being is. said... We're going to jump into the game here. So let's transition to our map and take you guys back to Shine Bright's tower and start. He's knocked, he's knocked out, right? Uh, he is currently unconscious still. After he cast that lightning on the, all the forks and spoons that were out there, he um, seemed to have exhausted the last of whatever he had, and he just fainted. I believe you talked some smack to him and kicked his unconscious body and walked away last uh oh, last yeah. he was messing with. Yeah, I didn't but... I verbally kicked him. I was kinda of pissed. Verbally I almost him. died. Well, Alright, well. Uh, it's on you well, guys now. What do you want to do? Hmm. Maybe we should leave him a note. Oh wait, I can't write. What the fuck was that? Huh? I just what? heard like a million dice roll. I have no idea. I didn't. That was probably our dice that we were test rolling before. Alright. Um, he looks comfortable, you guys. We gotta go get that to that meeting. You Here, I'll, draw, I'll, I'll, I'll write him a note, and I just draw him, like, a really cute picture of my me in my new outfit and Stovey. I can't move myself because the game is paused, sir. Oh, my bad. Hey, Dwayne, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good, mate. Glad to have a life now. Everyone else here is... I want to, like, tuck the... tuck the note in his, like, I don't know, jacket pocket or something. Is the note just a picture of you and Stovey? Yeah, with little oh. hearts around it and stars. Okay, you pack into one of his uh, robe pockets. That's all I put. <laughs> um, I go through his bookcase and I steal um, or I place uh that a uh, adult uh themed book about works in my uh backpack and I grow up. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. Can I like uh look through this bookcase real fast? Yeah. What are you looking for? Uh, <clears throat> spells. Spells. All right. Go. Yeah. Make make uh make an investigation check. Oh. Okay, you're perusing through these uh, books kind of scattered about, a few on the flip floor, a few on the shelves, looking for any type of uh, spell-like material. But all these books, every title you read just seems to be a, a story of some sort. Some uh, some poems, some uh, tales of uh, just, just various fantasy things dragons ghouls uh you know richard took a book of some sort as well and uh, i think arthur may have grabbed a book as well but nothing related to spells Aka, can you double check to see if he has orc massage too uh i would like to make an investigation check to see if he's got orc massage too i will save you time and say he does not have the sequel in this stack of books now you ain't got it what about the prequel? <laughs> nor the back. nor the prequel. <laughs> no. Green is the new black. And I give I give Richard a, a little pat on the back as I walk by. All right. 
You want to head back to town and uh, go to that farm and meet up with these wolves and the town people and talk to them? Hell yeah. Sure. Okay. Arthur, lead the way. Why are you making him lead? He's never led in his life. Fine, I'll lead them. I used to follow you guys, actually. Come on, Stovey. Okay. Uh, Baka, so do you I'll have... light up the pipe. Do you have the ability to control Stovey? Nope. I've been trying this whole time. Okay, let me see if I can fix that. Because that is your stove. You should be able to control it. So let's check some permits. Hey, Dwayne, you ever read uh, Orc Massage 2? I promise I'm going to get this uh, stovey up. Oh, I can move that one. There you go. Uh, hold on. Uh, 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 were you talking to... Uh, who are you talking to, Richard? It's Dwayne, have you ever read Orc Massage 2? <laughs> I've never read anything in my life, mate. I've oh. been alive for about a whole, I don't know, ten minutes. You're about to learn today, bud. And I put him on my shoulder. Or actually put him on my head. <laughs> we start walking out. Alright, let me give you... I, I can give you control to now that I understand how to do right. it. Got the owner. Oh. There you go. You should have full control over him now. Hell yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can highlight them both. Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. I'm learning. As we go, I'm explaining uh, to Dwayne the ups and downs about work massage. <laughs> Who's leading right now? Is it you, Richard? Yeah, because Arthur, Arthur didn't want to lead. Okay. So you all head out away from Shinebride's <laughs> Tower, <laughs> leaving him with a note of Bacaluda, or is it Bacaluda or Bacamus? I'm sorry, it's Bacaluda. Uh, leaving a note of Bacaluda and Stovey. Uh, well, dr well, actually, can Bacaluda draw really well? Hell yeah, he can. Okay, leaving an accurate depiction then behind. Um, I imagine it looks like more it's like exactly a what my outfit looks like with like the pants leg up and my. It all cut. <laughs> okay. Uh, he bags in my hair. It's great. It's great. Let's get you guys back on the Welton map here. So you make your way back towards Welton uh, as you continue down this little side path that you had taken that leads back to the main road. Um, currently, it is a little bit later in the. Well, I, Early in the afternoon. Say early in the afternoon. Sun's still high up in the sky. Weather feels all right. A light wind brushes across your face. It seems to be a really pleasant day. Uh, there are a lot of sounds coming from towards the road as you get closer and closer. And you can see every now and again, uh, you, you see what the sounds are. You see carriages heading north on this path. Uh, some of them seem to be celebrating and singing songs back and forth. Uh... A couple of them seem to be just uh, quiet, a quiet group with uh, children and whatnot. Uh, but there are multiple carriages heading to the north as you reach the road. Are we walking by the river? Uh, no, no, you guys are not by the river. Oh, okay. I don't, like, where exactly are we coming back from on the map? I'm just taking a wild guess. Like, uh, you guys would there. be somewhere in... Where would it be? It would be more along in this area here. We're coming from the north or coming from the south? You're coming from the north. So the carriages are going the opposite direction of us. Correct. Okay. Nothing, just silent. <laughs> um, that looks like fun. Are we? Are, so are we walking past the carriages? Like, uh, yeah, once you get to the road, uh, you'll be walking past uh, a couple. Can I, uh, the first one I see, can I, like, ask them, can I ask them to stop for a second and I talk to them? Uh, sure. How do you go about doing that? Hey, you! Can I speak to you for a second? Okay, you call out to the first carriage you see once you get close to the road. Uh, it's a bald man who's got a big, white, just bristly beard and a gnome sitting next to him. Um, it looks a little bit more unkempt. Um, 
he holds his horses or holds his horses. He what's the, what's the term? He pulls on his horses. We'll say that to slow them yeah. down a little bit, and uh, turns to you and says, "Oh well, 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 what, what, what is it? What you holding me up for? Where you lot going? Well, we're going to the carnival, of course. Ah, then he must know who I am." He looks over at his gnome friend, and the gnome turns to you and says, "I don't know who you are." I'm Richard. I'm the main performer, the main act of the carnival. <laughs> Make a deception check, Richard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's always the goofy stuff we get out of <laughs> The gnome narrows his eyes as he's peering at you and says, well, It sounds believable. What are you doing coming out the forest? I have to see my acts. Gotta go to the forest, get it all set up. Can't let the public know what I'm up to until the big show. Ask me your boy Blummins. Do you know about Blummins? We crossed the, the, the frog man that named himself Blemmons uh, on the way here as we were passing through Welton. But what are you guys going to the carnival for? Entertainment or business? Well, entertainment, of course. And he looks back up at his friend who turns to you and says, well, Yes, we actually were hoping maybe to... to Maybe sell a couple things while we're there and enjoy the the sights. I mean, it's only it only appears wherever it appears every eight years we hear, and well, it never been. So why not, right? What are you selling? Oh, just random this and that, uh, various weaves and quilts and blankets and whatnot. Uh, they're, uh, they're finely crafted, I believe. Are you two performers as well? Oh no, and I'm not a performer. Maybe my friend down here, but uh, no, not not me. Oh, your friend. And I guess it's he's pointing to the gnome who looks uncapped, right? Uh yeah, and he's still looking at you with his eyes narrowed, and, and he says, "Yeah, yeah, I have a, I have a, the ability to read people." Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. To me, to me. Uh, he looks at you and says, "Hmm." I can tell you must be some sort of of wizard or, or arcane arts user, am I correct? I just look really super shocked and say, Oh my god, he's right! Mm, yes, you see, I'm able to deduce this because you have a damn walking stove next to you. <laughs> Him and his friends start laughing on the carriage. Ah, we have a comedian here. Do How me. Would you... Ah, you. <laughs> you seem to be... Hmm. You might be a homeless man they found in the woods. <laughs> That's true! As I always Man, say, you good. <laughs> it's best to practice on the homeless first, because if you can entertain them, like you can entertain book. anyone. I want to give, like, a really, like, maybe a little too hard pat on, like, Sal's back. What's your name, uh, Gnome? Uh, Clit. I'm Clit. Clit? Oh. Like... <laughs> Like, Clint? Like, yes, Clint. Clint Higglesworth. What? Have you heard Clint of Higglesworth. me? Higglesworth. I might have. Well, <laughs> you know, I do need an opening act. Yeah, but he doesn't know where to find you. <laughs> I thought you lost your creativity, Sal. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't creative at all, though. Um, <laughs> Clint, how would you like to be my opening act for the show? Uh, yeah, maybe. What if, if if I see you there? Well, we'll I'll think about it. Well, I need you to know now. I can't just go out there without opening that. Well, you you seem friendly enough, but not to judge too harshly. And he looks back up at his friend and back at you and says, "You just approached off some weird side path in the woods, saying you're part of the carnival. You are a uh, I I don't know what to make of you fully yet." Well, let me show you. I uh, pull out my loot. And away. I start singing. I wrote this song about a good friend of mine, Dwayne. He's a little rocky. And I start blaring. What does Dwayne say during this? Do you want time me to just. The time is yours. The time is now. Actually, I should ask, do you want to do you want to be voicing and saying and doing what Dwayne does, or would you rather me be it so that we I don't control it? I would much rather you, because I can't do a British accent. 
Okay. Uh, as you you start this song, uh, Dwayne actually starts talking. Yeah, that's right. He's singing about me. Me, the Dwayne, the rock. Newly formed and here to make my place in the world. Which, the gnome is just looking looking down at it with confusion and back at you. Make a... Man, this is, this is an abnormal performance. Make a performance check with disadvantage. Oh... Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Um, one crit fail and one crit. Wait, 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 can I argue? Why is this with disadvantage? I This guy is nose of me through the frog blunders. It would be with disadvantage because you're, you're not just trying to play a song that, uh, that sounds legit with a rock talking over it, yelling about how he's uh, <laughs> new to town and here to lay claim. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, when you start singing this, uh, both of them look at you with confusion and kind of start laughing as you're singing. As they say, <laughs> I didn't know it was a, a comedy song. That's not bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, perhaps you are a, a performer of sorts. That's just a taste of what you'll see. Imagine all the fame and all the money that'll be going in towards your shop if you open up for me. Uh, well, it's a, uh, it's a thought. Uh, I don't know, Clint. Do you think we should? Uh, and Clint says, "Well, uh, I don't know. We, we, we'll have to think about it. We'll have to think about it. If you're truly going to the carnival, we'll see you there for sure. But we'd like, well, really like to get going. We're holding up." Uh, oh. And he turns okay, around. Okay. Well, let me give you my autograph before you leave. <laughs> and I look over to Dwayne. Dwayne, I need you to sign my name. <laughs> the rock. So I gotta ask you: Does it have hands or feet or anything, or is it just it has a rock? One, one big muscular arm. arm. <laughs> All right, it's it, it's muscular arm just reaches around your back and pats it. Goes, yeah, no problem, no problem. I can do it for you. <laughs> Give me the pen. <laughs> and he starts digging through your bag for a quill. Do you have a quill or anything in there? I sure do, because I stole it from the wizard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get out the... He gets out the quill and ink and just neatly dips it with his finger. Or actually, yeah, he could just use his finger, couldn't he? He just takes one big, massive finger, dips it in the ink pot, and starts trying to sign your name? Is that what you want him to sign? Exactly, but he does obviously doesn't know how to write, so it's just a bunch of <laughs> random shit. <laughs> it like squibbles. Uh, it <laughs> probably will be. Let's find out. Okay, uh, he signs something. It's definitely not your name, but the swirls and whatnot look very artistic. It actually looks fairly pleasant, but uh, more like a drawing than a signature. And he just holds it out up to the carriage, which is kind of, well, maybe like five, six feet away from it. And just says, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you hold on to that. Um, You know... One day, maybe I will be able to find you where we can perform together. Could you bring it to me? I don't want to hop off this thing. It's hard to get on. Fine, I grab it out. Here you go. And uh, Clint grabs it from you and just says, All right, we'll keep you in my... Uh, uh, he's looking at the paper. You? We'll keep you in mind, you. Richard D. Ross. Richard D. Ross. I knew it said that. What's it's just the stand for? Don't worry about it. <laughs> That sound, is that a thing? Did you two just do a thing? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, what are you uh, talking about? I uh, no, look not behind nothing. me. Who? Hey, Clint, I think you're slowing rock? down this caravan, bud. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, so we, we do have to get going. Uh, nice to meet you uh, people. Uh, have a good day, and he... I cast Minor Illusion in here, window break in the background. <laughs> <laughs> the forest echoes just with a, the sound of some <laughs> glass shattering. Uh, to which, what the hell? Oh, I have this on the wrong screen, my bad. Uh, to which Clint uh, says, oh, no, no, we need to go, we need to go. And they start just pushing those horses and they take off quite quickly uh, down the trail. <laughs> I laughed way too hard there. All right, sorry. You guys keep going. <laughs> I'm done for the night. <laughs> you say that. <laughs> All right. Well, should we go to town or should we go to the wolves first? 
I thought we were going to meet them at, everyone was going to meet at the farm. They said they'll be there. I, I trust that they'll be there. Alright, so I guess we should just go straight to the farm. Yeah. Okay, this way! Wait, you, you know which farm, right? No idea! But I'm confident it's a farm. I believe it was, um... No, I do know which farm. Grim I just don't know Grimstone's right now. farm. Correct? Can someone back me up? Yeah, you just gotta give me a second. Hold on. That old dude who hates everyone, we decided to meet at his house because he's an asshole. I have it written down. Hold on, I'm having the look. Okay, apparently I didn't write it down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Grimstone's farm. I think that's in my other book. Why does nobody else take notes? I have it written down. In my other book. <laughs> Jamie, we have this written down as Grimstone's farm. Can I cast a history check just to confirm <laughs> that? You know what? Sure. Sure, you can go ahead. Oh, at all. You are, without a doubt, you're not even second guessing yourself. You know it's called Grimstone's Farm. It's not Grimstone's Farm. That's not the right name. Yeah, it's Grimstone. It's Wesley. Rich, you think she's insane saying this? You're positive it's Grimstone. No, can it's I Grimstone. do? Can I do a fucking check? Yeah, if you want to. You're pretty sure it was the westerly form. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, no. It's it's the west. It's so we got two. Of... We got two different answers here. Well, who are you gonna trust? Throw this out there. Who are we gonna trust? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So you don't think the farm even had a name? You think it's actually abandoned? <laughs> it was some abandoned right. form. Okay. Okay. My turn. Oh, <laughs> are, are they? Yeah, westerly sounds right. Okay. Well, what about Sal? Sal, what farm do you think it's at? Uh, that abandoned one that we went past, like, a week and a half ago. Well, the name, the name of it. It was Grimstone, right? It didn't have a name. It was just abandoned. <laughs> no one lived there. How could it have a name? All right. <laughs> if we if we go to the wrong farm, I'm feeding you to the wolves, Baka. Uh... There won't be any wolves if it's the wrong farm. Oh shit, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Onward! And then, oh, uh... I would like to take us northwest outside of town. The north route at the fork. So you guys are cutting through the town, or are you just cutting straight from the, the path you're on? I'd say you were right about here, traveling still. Right from the path we're on. Yeah, we're, we're late as it is. Okay. So you guys uh, cut through the fields, roam the hills and whatnot, heading to the farm that might be Grimstone or Westerly, is, or an abandoned farm, potentially. As you all head to your meeting with the wolves, it takes a... Uh, let's see how long it's going to take here. It takes about maybe an hour to get over there. So it's a little bit later in the afternoon now. Uh, but still lots of sunlight out, so high hopes. Uh, once you arrive, you are met with the familiar scene of the Westerly farmhouse. I think it's called Wesley. It's Wesley, Wesley, one of those. Um, Wesley. Wesley, that's right. Uh, as you recall, there is an older gentleman here who's not very kind, but uh, you're using the side of his house to, to meet up for this. Um, currently... Once you all arrive, as far as you could tell, you four are the only ones there. Well. Can I make an inside check? What are you uh, insiding? I want to make sure that we are the only ones. So you're kind of quiet. Let me turn you up. Hold on. Um, that would not be an insight check. That would be oh. a perception check if you're trying to look around and see if anything else is around. Go ahead and make a perception check. Okay, you glance around the, the farm when you guys arrive, and you remember that pen on the side that had some, some chickens and whatnot and a few sheep. 
Um, there's still a... There are a couple of li little bit of livestock there, so you're not truly alone. And there could be an occupant of the farm itself currently, but you're outside, so you can't tell that. But just looking around, you don't see anything else in the area. I told you it was the Grimstone Farm. No, this is right. And then I start making wolf noises. Like, making, really badly. Making wolf noises? Okay, can I make a performance check for that? With disadvantage. No, I don't even need disadvantage. Don't worry. It's gonna um, I, I, you know, I guess that's a... Yeah, that's a perform. Perform your 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 wolf sounds. Oh shit! I rolled higher than I thought I would. <laughs> okay, so you. you uh, I have a negative one to performance just to let you know. <laughs> I probably should have made you do survival since you're not really trying to. Oh, you act. want you're survival? Trying to mimic. Okay, let me yeah. do a survival check. This is some this is some super super naturey stuff. And what do you sound like when you do it? Give us an example. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, you, you I just start doing that. howling noises. Rick, what was the signal? I don't know. God damn it, Rick. I think we're at the wrong farm. Why don't, Why don't you just do the, the fucking signal? Actually, I think I could just really wheel y'all near the farm. You guys are all in these positions here. There you go. I don't know. I just thought we we're gonna meet here. I know we're late. Are we sure it's the right day? We said three days, right? Is this yeah, Saturday? it's the right day, but we never gave a time. <clears throat> I thought we said the afternoon. The Rick, go knock on the door and see if anyone was here. Maybe somebody right. should go check in town. Uh, Sal, you're the fastest. You want to run into town, or do you want to run run into the woods? Uh, I'll go run into the woods, look for the wolves in their den. All What's right. everybody's passive perception? Uh, plus four. No, they're the wrong number. Twelve. What do you mean raw number? Like passive it's wisdom? Oh, oh I'm 14. sorry, passive wisdom. Yeah. Fourteen. Passive wisdom. Well, no, no, 18? no. You, you, you confuse. Double confuse me. No, it should be. It should it's be passive, passive wisdom, and it says perception next to it. Yes, that. Or fourteen. Twelve. Fourteen. And Arthur. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, who was the twelve? Me. Okay. Everybody but Sal uh, can uh, notice this. Then you uh, see in the distance to the path that you trap. Well, not the path you guys traveled on, but the normal path leading to the fork in the road. Uh, you see a few figures uh, approaching slowly. Uh, they're not. You can't really make them out because they're kind of far right now, but you can see them coming up. I'm looking the complete opposite direction. Ah, look, here they come. Are you sure that's them? Rick, Richard, you're supposed to do the signal. Um, I do the signal. What, what is the signal? I have no idea what this. I have... you said you were gonna sing for him. Yeah, I, sing the song. Sing the I song. I sing my new song about the rock. <clears throat> Your time is up. My time is now. You can't see me. My time is now. It's the franchise boy. I'm shining now. You can't see me. My time is now. So as they, they get closer, you can see it's a, a couple of halflings and a human approaching you. And as they get closer and closer, they start looking more familiar. The one up f uh, front doesn't really do anything. Just still walking up, listening to you yell. As the one, oh, two in the back actually give a, a friendly wave. Let me reveal them. And the one in front, while you're in the middle of singing, shouts, Oh, enough of that noise! God, no, I don't know. It's so annoying. Oh, I thought you'd like it. Well, no, don't like it right now. I'm... Oh, no, we're about to meet these be beasts and whatnot and make... And as the, uh... As Tillis is making these, uh, complaints... Coral walks up and just pats his shoulder and says, Easy, my friend, easy. We don't want to scare our new potential allies already. And then he What's looks up, at you and says, uh, yeah, Thanks for, for being here. I'm glad you were here first. Of course. You, 
you weren't here and the, the wolves were, it'd be a little nerve-wracking for us. Yeah, well, yeah, speaking of. Richard, you suck at singing. You didn't even get them. Alright. Uh, I start singing, and I'm howling like the wolf. Are you trying to impress them, or are you just kind of singing? I'm just trying to get out, the wolves out. Get the wolves oh, you're trying to get the wolves out. <laughs> you look at the forest, just just singing, looking back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you you're singing at the 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 forest, hoping maybe something comes out, and uh, nothing happens. Well, that doesn't seem right. Well, we're going to send Sal into the, the woods to go get them wolves. In the meantime, how do you guys feel about that carnival coming to town? It might be good for business, right? <sighs> good for business. Uh, a little bit, sure. People passing through and, and purchasing stuff and buying things from us as they need for the trip, so you could say that. Um, not so good with the... Merchants themselves wanting to leave town to go to the damn carnival so we can't even run businesses! Ooh. Well, we gotta spread the word of the town. How far is the carnival from town, anyway? Also, a carnival doesn't last that long, does it? I don't know how long it lasts. What is it? I don't even know if it's real. All these people are going somewhere in some stupid carnival, and it's a, it's a waste of time, you ask me. Why would I even want to go watch people throw sticks in the air and dance? And it sounds... So and he just keeps rambling on and complaining. And I'm just Man. listening to all of his concerns, like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. He has uh, no in, idea. <laughs> in the meantime, I kind of point at Sal. Hey, do you want to head into the woods to see if you can attract them? Yeah. Um, All right. I cast a wild shape. All right, so you and turn I... uh, into what do you turn into? Direwolf. All right. And I go into the woods towards the d direction that I know that the um, den is. Okay, you all see Sal start making his way into the forest. So I'm going to move you over here, so I know you're you're not with the party right now. And uh, you enter the forest, heading towards hopefully where their den is, using your sense of smell and whatnot to guide yes. your way. Um, in the meantime, what's everybody else doing? Just gonna are we is, just gonna hang out and wait? Is this the father in front of me? Uh, it is. It is Father Merrickson. He hasn't father said a Merrickson, single word we, since he approached. Uh, we do have an update about the situation involving your son's colleague. How do you? I know? just sit. And I whatever. climb on top of Stovey and sit, by the way. And I kind of give him a repeat about how we um, went to uh, the wizard's house and how his colleague was basically uh, performing lots of like uh, crazy transmutations. Um, but it was all resolved. But alas, um, it's still still sad news that we believe his son is to be totally missing and perish. It was a bit unnerving seeing uh, that brute and those creatures just come through town. Um, it's good to know that that's all dealt with and shine yeah. bright's where he should be. Only my well, son. They all were here too. They all no longer. Oh, sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, no. He's just, he trails off just talking about his son. Yeah. Uh, we should have a proper funeral once we get matters involved here. He, uh, he shifts his eyes away from you and kind of looks into the woods and says, Indeed, we should have a proper funeral. Uh, uh, can I put like my hand on his shoulder? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I put my hand on his shoulder and be like, uh, With his death, though, he did spawn new life. Uh, look at this as a uh, new beginning of your son's last wishes. Just make shit like that. Make an insight check for me, Richard. Oh, insight. Let's see. Okay, as you uh, you put your hand on his shoulder and try to try to ease him a little bit to to basically just soften it, the whole all the stuff that's happened to him. Um, you can tell by his expression and how he's looking into the woods. He has a a look of just slight contempt on his face. He's a contempt. 
Yeah, like he looks, uh, he doesn't look very happy. Okay. All right. Um, in the meantime, Sal, as you are heading through the trees and just sniffing the ground occasionally, trying to sniff out the trail to this uh, den, you actually an uh, actually make a make a perception check for me. Let's see, let's see how this plays out. Okay, um, you are you're still following the trail. You know, you're not having any issues finding where to go, but you hear a low growl to the side through some bushes and tall grass. And when you look, you see an a wolf in leather armored garb slowly approaching, and he says, "It's you. You're coming to the den for why." can't talk he all right I, I shape out of wild <laughs> shape form <laughs> okay you turn back into sal the druid we're looking for bolt and flame right flame uh yes that is correct um the wolf says to you look no further we head to the meeting uh the rest are right behind me if you wait a moment they'll catch up I'm just a scout to make sure everything's there. okay. All right. Uh, would you like to travel back together then? Yeah, we'll travel back together. Right. Then we wait. And he sits down, kind of like a good dog. Can I pet him? <laughs> you want to reach your hand out towards his head? Does he look uh, receptive to pets? He has a stoic expression on his face right now. Like he's not panting or looking up at you with big eyes. He just has them like half closed, just sitting. I want to ask him if I can pet him. You want to pet me? <laughs> yeah. What is... <laughs> you know, like scratches behind the ears. Um, you got any hard to reach places? Well, my... Belly rubs. My ears in this armor is torture. Perhaps you could... Maybe move it a, a little, and it looks like he's he it looks like he's he's uh, trying to be coy about it, but he shifts his ear to you slightly while just looking uh, a little embarrassed. I'm giving him pets, right this behind the it. ear, underneath the armor, like you know when you pet a dog underneath the collar and they go crazy. <laughs> yeah, so that's you, what I'm doing. So you uh, you give him them good scratches, and he uh, he eases up a lot and starts acting more like a dog, like leaning into it. You hear him <laughs> panting. He sounds way more happy when you start doing it. Um, Who's but a boy? Just a couple <laughs> minutes later, you hear a a loud voice from a few trees back approaching, and it says, "Enough of that, soldier! Don't act like that in front of them." And you can see flame approaching with an entourage of three more armored wolves. And as she gets close, uh, she gets very close to you, actually, and she just sniffs a bit and says, Where are the others? They're at the spot, right? Everybody's at the farm waiting. Good. Then we go. Where's Bolt? Bolt will not be joining us. I insisted it to be just me and a few others. Hmm. Insight check. <laughs> you want, are you trying to see how truthful <laughs> Flame is being? Yes. All right. So let's let's see if you can divvy some wolf faces. You are a druid, so you shouldn't have too much difficulty here. Go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. All right. <laughs> you try to gather what you can from Flame's words and her expression, and the expression that she's giving you right now is one of. Uh, it's almost like one of how would you explain this? Like she's seeking or looking for some sort of honor or respect. Like the way she says it, it almost seems like she's not trying to do it nefariously or whatnot, but like she's trying to test truly how this is going to work. So like I don't pick up the hint that like anything bad happened to Bolt. No, no, no. Okay. All right. Well, they're uh, that way. Good. Then we go. 
and you start heading through the woods with Flame. Uh, Flame proudly uh, just power walking in front of you and taking the lead. Uh, everyone else, you're kind of just hanging out. I'm assuming we're making small talk with one another. Coral's trying to keep things chill. Taylor's still arguing and Merrickson not saying anything. Uh, not long, though, you can see in the forest uh, a light flickering quickly as it approaches closer and closer until you can see Sal and Flame start approaching the tree line along with four armored wolves. When these this whole group approaches, you see Tillis, Coral, and Father Merrickson just go silent, just staring at Flame and not moving. And Flame I, uh... walks out of the tree line, she says, And here you are. As What's promised. Up? I, What's um, up, I, Hot Mama? I get in front of the three and I said, Okay, don't panic. I know she's big, but she's she's nice. She's, she's hot. <laughs> Jamie, can you put can you put like a sub uh, like a special mark on the the dog that I was petting? Sure. Just for just for my own uh, record keeping. I think it was this guy. We're gonna give him the. We're gonna give him that little head. That's the guy you scratched. All right. So, Flame steps forward again, and says. So, I'm here to hear this farce with my own ears. An alliance with you. Is that why we're here? Uh, actually, let me make a roll for him. Oh, where is it? There it is. <laughs> Tilla steps forward uh, next to you, Baka. And uh, Sal, are you staying on the side of the wolves, or where are you staying? Oh, God. Yeah, I'm, I'm standing with the wolves. Okay. Tillis walks up and says, Um, we are here to discuss, um, the potential of working together, regardless of our livestock being slaughtered and taken from us. Flame snarls a bit and just lowers her head slightly and says an alliance yes surely we can make one knowing that you've hunted and slain our kind for no cause but sport and suspicion hey 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 I kind of hop in front of them we're not talking about the past now folks we're talking about the future you know you gotta give and take Coral will uh, step forward and follow up with you and uh, say, uh, yes, I, I, I know things have been rough between our people and, and yours, but with your newfound intelligence, it's that changes everything. If these adventures, is what they say is true, then we, we can work together. We can, we, we can absolutely work together to make this whole area safer and provide for one another. Flame looks to the halfling and stares, just looks him in the eye. Let's see what, what she gets here. Ooh. She takes a few uh, sniffs and then raises her head looking down at him and says, You seem like a trustworthy one, which means a lot coming from me. There are many more of us and others the size of myself who reside within the woods. We have taken from you. This is not a lie. You've taken from us, which I know is not a lie, but these ones. And she turns and looks at you, Richard, and look, glances at you, Sal, and then over towards you, Baca and Arthur. I just give a little wave. <laughs> I just stare. These ones were, were to be my prey. I was going to kill them. I tried to kill them, repeatedly. I attacked them over and over. They held me back. They did their best to keep me at bay. And they pleaded and pleaded and pleaded, putting their lives on the line. And I thought, for what? Why? This is not your people's way. This is not what you do. But here they are. How? 
That is the only reason I think an alliance could work. If there are more like these, if you are anything compared to them, then perhaps we can... And she uh, just snarls a little bit and finally just stops tensing up and lowers her head again and says, perhaps works together. Can I look at, can I look around to see how everyone's expression is? Uh, yeah. I look really excited. Uh, right. Everyone's uh, expressions are pretty, they're pretty written on their faces right now. I'm going to let everyone else say what they, how they're feeling, but Father Merrickson seems to, his expression is unchanged as he's just staring at flame. Uh, Coral looks quite hopeful, nodding to her words, and Tillis still looks uh, extremely nervous, but it looks like he's about to speak up. Uh, Baka, what do you look like right now? Really excited. All right, and Richard? I'm like a little bit on edge trying to make sure Tillis doesn't say anything like stupid. <laughs> because I'm like, I'm like in between them, kind of like, oh, hey, like, I'm like, if someone were to like shoot a bow or a flame, I would be in the crossfire, so I'm like a little tense. And Sal? Um, I'm just kind of blank faced, just uh, thinking about the, the soldier dog. He was great. Yeah, thinking about how good of a boy he was. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I just keep glancing at him. Tillis uh, <laughs> speaks up immediately as soon as she's done talking and says, oh, Well, yes, of, of course, a, 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 an alliance could work. I, I agree wholeheartedly. And we will discuss business and dealings and, and perhaps what to, what you could do for us and then what we could provide for y y you. And his words are very, they're very stuttered and they're very... They don't sound very... It's hard to tell if they're sincere or not because of what the condition he's in. And as he's speaking, Flame uh, looks down at you, uh, Richard, and says, Move aside for a moment. Uh, of course. After you. Flame takes a few steps forward, looking down at Tilius, who is in the middle of talking still, but starts stuttering more and more and stops talking when Flame is just towering over him. And she lowers her head right in front of his nose and looks into his eyes. And she says, But I am uncertain about this one. I'm going to have him make another check here. To which Tilius uh, holds his chest out and looks at her and says, I, I don't, don't know what you speak of. You, you must understand. I've never seen a creature of, of, of your sort before like, like this. So it's... A lot to take in, but I, I assure you, we, we can, we can do this. We can make this work. Flame raises her head again away from him. It looks like she's satisfied from that answer. And she looks past him towards Father Merrickson and says, And is he of importance too, or is he just here to watch? And uh, she seems to be asking open-endedly. She's not really... Might I interject anyone. them? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Flame... Uh, this gentleman over here is actually the father of Alexi. The Flame, wizard uh, who gave y'all the power. Flame looks at, at you, uh, Richard, and actually has an expression of surprise, which you haven't seen on her face before, as she looks back to Father Merrickson and says, Then we... And it looks like she's kind of struggling with something at the moment, like she's really, really struggling to say this, but says, Have a great depth to you in particular and she bows her head down the other wolves follow suit which Merrickson finally takes a step forward and says I came here hoping to see this break down I came here hoping you'd force these people's hands to do something to you to you and your kind but I believe for the sake of my son and the the peace I can see that could truly exist here. I can understand where you come from. And he just lowers his head. It looks like he's tearing up a little bit. Flame just stares at him. She says nothing. What are y'all doing? I um I, I kinda wanna I kinda wanna start talking to Flame. Sure. And, Wait, what'd you say? It was like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I give a big sigh, thinking like, oh, that's a relief, because I was really, really worried about what Father was going to do. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Richard. 
Um, Flame, I'm sure you understand. Um, he's still struggling with the loss of his son. But out of all of us here, I feel like he's most important to talk about this town because he's, I guess I would describe as someone that would be the closest to you guys and almost, I guess, as a relative almost. I understand. Losing one's pack member is never, never a good feeling. It can be very tough, tough to deal with, but I believe I have heard enough. You seem worthy of our trust. If you would, please. Um, you are council men, I believe we were told. And Tilius nods at her. Y yes, yeah, that's, well, the most important ones. We'll put it that way. Ah, <laughs> uh, y y yes. The uh, flame says, very well. Join me then. I would like to introduce you to Bolt and the rest of my pack. And there we can discuss more terms. Now, Flame tur just turns around and starts slowly walking back to the forest. Which, uh, Tilia says, uh, uh, right, very well. And starts following behind. And Merrickson just slow walks behind them as well. Coral stops for a moment, looking at all of you, and says, I can't really believe it, but it seems we're now going to forge an alliance with the magical wolves of the woods. And this is thanks to you. Are you... Are you certain you don't want any sort of reward? Ah, uh, just make sure the, the barkeep with the red hair, who I thought was a guy, gets paid handsomely. Um... You... You thought she was a, 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 a man? We'll talk about that later after at the after party, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let's, go, let's go to the woods! Well, well, I was going to say, um... I believe... I believe we can handle it from here. I want to... I want to show them without having muscle behind us that we're willing to stand on our own two feet. That being said, I... We are beyond in your debt, and I assure you, I, or if not we, will find a way to repay you in the future, wherever you are. Um, um while all this was happening... I wanted to, like, walk around to Bakaluda and ask her if Stovey, like, un like kind of quiet, so no like, nobody can really hear me, except her. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask if Stovey has any uh, food, any meats. Uh, just that stew I made. Can I have a little bit of it? Like, in a little cup? Yeah, and then, uh, I... Pat Stovey on the back, and I guess he'll open his mouth and pop the stew out. Dude. It's in like a big bowl. It's gonna right, like sit take in the, the bowl. It's lukewarm. Yeah, I, I, I take the bowl over <laughs> to to the puppy, and I, I give him some stew. You run up to one of the armored dogs as uh before he heads out, and you hold this stew bowl, bowl of stew down, which he he quickly looks at the rest of his pack, just slowly going to the woods, and then turns back to you real quick. It starts quickly just lapping it up, like right out of the bowl. I'm gonna need that bowl back. You can uh, just hear him. You'll get the bowl back. Oh, God. Um, I wanna, I wanna whisper to him. Uh, I was like, "Come with us." He eats some more and he looks at you and then back to his pack. Says, "I, I, 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 I can't. I have to. I must stay with the pack. We, I cannot abandon the pack. But that, that, thank you for the, for the. You can have a new pack. And I can't, I can't leave. I can't. I can't. And he starts. But you're such a good boy. Dripping stew off of his chin hairs as he's as he's hauling butt in the back of the woods to follow his group. Am I able to see this? Like, am I in, am I in the view range of what Sal's doing? Yeah, he wasn't, uh, this was one of the wolves that was, he was standing in line with Flam, so yeah, he's not that far away at all. I'm, I'm gonna come next to him and ask Sal's like, what are you, did you just give the dog some food? Uh, the wolf some food? Yeah, he's a good boy, leave it alone. Oh, I trust, yeah, I know he's a good boy. I, I he's think a really good boy. <laughs> he but likes ear scratchies. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. Have you tried? What were you? What were you talking to him about? I just put my head down. Nothing. <laughs> I put my <laughs> hand on his back. It's okay, Sal. We all get rejected sometimes. 
Um, am I able to uh, talk to the blonde <laughs> halfling so uh, to the side for a little bit? Um, he actually turned away to start leaving, but yeah, you can uh, you can stop him for a moment. And as he... what's his name again? Yolder. Coral. Wow. Where did I... Hey, Coral. Uh, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> um, of of course. As long as it's quick, I don't want to get lost in the woods behind them. Oh yeah, no worries. It'll be just a second. Um, and, and, and is Coral and I like in earshot of anyone? Uh, do you want to be? No. Okay. You pull Coral aside, uh, and Baca and well, actually just Baca because Arthur and Sal were looking at the dog going to the woods. Baca, you can see uh, Richard pulling Coral aside a, a little bit away from you. I'm not paying attention to that. I'm watching Sal and making sure you don't get rid of my bull. <laughs> hey, Richard, you need that back. It's just you two. It's you two in the world right now. Or uh, how much do you trust Tillis? Uh, Tillis is. I I. What am I doing? I I I. Of course I trust Tillis. He is. He is the council head. He represents the halfling population of Welton, and he. We've been through some tough times, and he's had to make some tough choices. But in the end, he. Truly, just wants what's best for the town. Although, it is very convincing that he also wants what's best for his own ego. Um, I still do trust him. With your life? Now, let's not go saying crazy things or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I, if we were out in the woods and it was me and him, he would, he would basically be my servant to be able to survive with his level <laughs> of knowledge on surviving. Well, as someone that I trust and someone that I appreciate for taking my word first from the council, um, can I ask you a favor of you? Of course. Anything. Flame is very instinctive. Flame is still not 100% convinced about Tillis. Can you just keep an eye on him and report anything weird? I don't think he will go out of the ordinary to do anything crazy or to trick anyone. But I just want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on him. I can absolutely wa watch over him, and if things look a little tense, I can... I saw how you handled it, and I'll follow suit. I I trust that this, this flame will not strike without good reason, so I'm not afraid to get close and intervene. But Flame's not the one I'm worried about. You think... You think Talos would try to betray them? These wolves are very instinctive. They know when something is wrong. I see. So, I just want you to keep that in mind. And if anything crazy comes abrupt, I want you to contact us, okay? Of course, uh, but I, how, how do I contact you? I uh, take out Rocky. <laughs> he, he looks <laughs> down at the rock. As you take out Rocky... Uh, he holds up his huge arm and just has a thumbs up and says, Oi, what up, man? <laughs> he looks down at the rock and says, well, um, <laughs> You have a... That rock is talking and has an abnormally large rock arm. Rocky, <laughs> this gentleman requires a uh, autograph. Right, right. I'm on it. <laughs> he reaches into your bag and starts fiddling again and finds that ink pot and dips his finger in it. And then uh, grabs a piece of parchment and takes it out and just starts scribbling all over it again. I shut over this. I love Rocky. It's great. He then uh, holds the, amazing. the parchment up to Coral says, All right, hit. And just holds it in his face, to which Coral looks at it and says, <laughs> Um, is, is this a map to where you'll be going? <laughs> Coral, we're going to be at the fair. Oh, the... That's just my autograph. If you need me, I'll be the main act. I I, I grab the paper and I stuff it in his pocket. Oh, Cherish um, this. Oh, I will. It looked like a strange path, but if... Okay, well, either way, I'll send a runner, but it might take some time to reach you. I know the carnival's a few days out. Um, If I had magical means, I'd message you that way, but I'm afraid I don't know of anyone who can do that. A runner is fine. We'll make sure to stop into town uh, after the carnival just to catch up. So you're going to the carnival then? Yes. Well. Will you be going? Uh, no, I'm afraid too much responsibility in the village. 
Well then, uh, let's plan for a drink, uh... If you need anything right away, you can send a dispatch. They'll know I'm the main act. And, uh, we'll plan for a drink after the carnival. Stop in and check in. That sounds like a plan, my friend. It's hard to imagine, too. I don't know how you pulled it off, but... A main act at the carnival is... That's rather impressive. I'd watch your back, too, if I were you, though. <laughs> that's a 10,000 gold gig. Can't turn it down. I can oh see God. easily why you told us to keep the gold for ourselves, too, then. <laughs> I kind of give him a wink, and I uh, put out my hand to give him a handshake. He grabs your hand firmly and smiles as he shakes it. Good luck, Fred. Aye, and you, too. Um, and all of you, again, uh, thank... Oh, oh, I'm fall And he, he turns around and starts rushing the forest, and he yells, uh, uh, Thank you again! I'm, I'm sure we'll meet again! And he, he turns and rushes off to catch up. And now it is just you four out here. A consolidation. Uh, here. I walk back to Bakaluda and give her stupid bowl back. Yeah. <laughs> I take that like, bowl and I put it back inside Stovey. You just hold on to this. Who the bowl? I stand by myself. <laughs> I'd say an adventure well done, lads. Who I wants to go get Stovey's a drink? Belly. I mean, all right. And Bobby. then, like, I, I point forward in the direction I go, Go, Stovey! Stovey! And it starts rushing up to... It rush, actually rushes up to Sal and just kind of looks up at him. And when I say looks up, it's really hard to tell it's looking, but based on how its grill is and its front, you can see it aimed up at Sal. I mean, I'm still on top of it, so... Oh, you, <laughs> you start sliding off a little bit if that's okay. <laughs> all right, Stovey, uh, Baka, can I ask you... Can I ask you a quick question before we leave? Yeah? You still got them lollipops? Yeah? You mind dropping one off for our good friend Coral? Where? When we go back to town. I mean, yeah. And then All I right. pull out, like, three lollipops and just hand them to Richard. Thank you. Don't ask where they came from. <laughs> Alright. Who wants to go get a drink? Yeah! Well, me, down. of course, we put down about six or seven points. Hey, are you even old enough to drink, Dwayne? Of course I am. You not hear me? Look at this arm! And he starts flexing right next to you. How old are you <laughs> in rock years? <laughs> old enough to be your dead. <laughs> We're gonna... Oh, oh. <laughs> God damn. Uh, uh, wait until we read Orc Massage 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Dwayne's fucking savage. <laughs> hey, I guess uh, we're going back to the inn, I guess. Okay. Okay. Uh, when does the you know we have? Never mind. I guess we'll figure it out in town. Yeah, you guys start heading back into town. Um, it takes about another hour of travel, I'd say. Is that caravan the still going? The whole way into town, I'm just looking over my shoulder back into the woods. Now all of you can kind of see Sal look uh, look in the woods. Almost looks like he's he's missing something as uh, he turns and looks. It's okay, Sal, and I give him like a little pat on the back. Oh. I just sigh. I know you wanted a new friend. Are you sure you don't want me to change your clothes, man? They're looking a little tattered. Don't touch me. <laughs> um, as you guys head out, Arthur, you're positive absolutely positive that you you're going the wrong direction towards town you know it's supposed to be west instead of east it's just I kn I'm just following what my friends are doing <laughs> you you follow along a little confused but just just staying behind I or, cast no, not insight behind, onto though. him because I lo I'm looking at him and he's like looking kind of weird yeah sure go I'm like looking towards the distance wait what'd you say Arthur? Oh. I'm looking towards the distance that's why like, b b away from Richard or towards him? Like, away. Okay. And you turn and look towards Arthur, and you see him looking into the forest, and uh, you don't even have to guess. You you know it's a he's actually really, really upset about that wolf going back in the woods, same as Sal. <laughs> Arthur, I'll steal you another candle, man. Let's go. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, you guys continue on. 
Um, about an hour later, you make it back towards Welton. Uh, you didn't see many caravans or whatnot passing on this part of the trail. It's rather, rather, uh, personless on the way back. Uh, but you do make it back to town. And as on cue, you see just down the road a bit, a familiar frog still dancing and prancing, putting light beams and colors and all sorts of fantastical display of acting in front of uh, a few people. Looks like folks have gotten really used to him. Uh, so only a couple people are standing around watching and smiling or cheering when he's acting. Blemens! Uh, Blemens pauses for a moment and looks over and says, oh, It's you! It's you! You've returned! Then to the carnival you go next, yes? No. Yeah! I walk past I need, in, I need information! An excited As one! I and a sour on my puss. <laughs> You need information from me, you ask? Yes. Now why would you put me to the task? I'm simply here to perform. Well, it was... Where's the carnival? I don't know where to go. I don't know where to get tickets. I don't know how much they are. If the carnival is the only info you seek, then it's the only info I can give. Head north, of course, along the trail towards Baldur's Gate. The carnival's there, and there it awaits. How much are the tickets? All the games. Tickets are negotiable per person, as always. Okay. And then how long is the carnival? The carnival is here for a week's long period. Enjoy yourselves. Will there be food? Food, drinking, games, dancing, entertainment, be a part, become a part, or simply enjoy it. The Witchlight Carnival is open to all. And as he, he starts bowing and extending his hands when he says that, and a small beam of light appears between his hands and slowly flutters over his head. Lemons, uh, you guys are going to have my deposit when I arrive there, correct? A jest Before from a jester. <laughs> Wait, before he closes oh. his hands, I, th I throw a lollipop in there. Uh, he takes the lollipop and looks at it for a moment. A trinket and gift from you, as well as a gift from me. And he holds out his hand to you, and a small little beam of light, it looks like a stick with a rounded tip, is in his hand as he's holding it out to you. Ooh, I'm not that? jesting, good sir. You told me that I was the main act and I would be paid handsomely. Uh... What's the beam of light thingy? Do you, I mean, just staring at it? It's, it looks like a small, it looks like your lollipop, actually, except just completely made out of light. Oh, I pick it up. And when you do, it turns into tiny little butterflies that start <laughs> fluttering around your head. Okay. I laugh a little too happy at that. <laughs> Blimmin's I look at over, all. over to you, Richard, and says, A prankster can't be a prankster to a prankster. Our conversation before was curious. A main act, if you are, you are. If not, I expect as much. I expect gold. Receive gold for a deed well done, or an act well performed. I gotta go over that. You're gonna put my name on the poster? Blemons is no such marketer of sorts for the carnival. Only word of mouth and direction to where. I see. So I will be telling your uh, bosses that it's a thousand gold deposit when I show up. He leans in close to you while smiling and does another little bow as he says, A thousand gold's a bargain. Ask for more if you could. Mm -hmm. I like the way you think. Are you sure uh, you want to work for these guys? You could be my agent. My home is with the carnival, and with the carnival oh. I'll stay. Now, don't take too long. Go ahead. Make way. All right, let's grab these beers and head out. And then I, I pat Stovey on the back. Can I, um, Jamie, can I ask you a question? You sure can. If I were to charm someone, uh, they know that they're charmed Bye, afterwards, correct? They, uh, if they would know that they are 
uh, magic is being cast on me. So even if they are charmed, by the time it wears off, they know it happened. All right, just curious. Okay, nope. Um. Oh, can I talk to Blum, uh, ask Blumens one question? Sure. Your bosses, um, they're Wish and Light, correct? Wish and Light, my bosses. <laughs> he means uh, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Ha! This <laughs> one is correct. How are they? Are they nice folk? They are interesting fellows, how they came to be. They run the carnival however they see. But they bring in people and we have a good time, so I believe that's all that matters, at least for mine. What made you want to join them? I've been with the carnival long as I can remember. As a fae myself, they hail from my realm. So I follow them where they choose to go and bring smiles and joy to all I meet. Do you miss your family? Rather deep questions for such a joyous occasion. All this talk is pleasant, but please, the carnival awaits. The reason why I'm asking, and my colleagues are asking Bloodmans, is because you know as me being the main act, um, and potentially wanting to join your carnival, I want to see what kind of, you know, just experience another employee has there. You know? Hmm. I see, I see. But it is, it is impossible to be the main act. Well, you can see right now, and Blemons does a flourish spin, and a swirl of two lights appear above his head and sparkle through the air as he says, The main act is I. Ooh. Oh, I so mean, he's got a point. Man. Well, regardless, you're still not answering my question. As employee to employee, how is it? Make a, uh, make a persuasion check. Oh, my God. <laughs> Christ, Rick. He, uh, looks at you and just smirks a bit and says, well, The witch-like carnival is wonderful to all, to everyone, worker and in fair goer alike. <laughs> I see. How much do you get paid? Mm, a sensitive topic. One I'm not comfortable discussing with you. These questions, though. Dental? Too many, too many. An interrogation, it seems. When I'm here simply to have fun and talk about the carnival and its dreams. Do they have dental? Oh my god, Richard. I would like to... The adventurous oh, girl doesn't have dental blemins, and I, you know my teeth are starting to rot. You know I would like saying? to just like start tugging on Rick's <laughs> shirt, and like I'm still on top of Stovey, so I'm like holding onto his smokestack and pulling Rick behind me. <laughs> blemins actually uh, hops up to you, Richard, as he leans in close and puts his hands on your face and starts kind of pulling at your mouth a bit, um, saying. Oh dear, oh dear, a tooth decay problem I can take care of on my own. Tell me, tell me, where does it hurt the most? And he's looking at uh, your teeth. What are you, are you doing anything about it? I got this one in my back right molar on the top. <laughs> uh, Blemons, uh, he opens your mouth wide and starts trying to peer in. You can all see this. Richard's just holding, has his head out, his mouth's open, and Blemons is trying to peer inside. Uh, what's What are all of y'all doing about this? I'm just yeah, no, like, this is uh, normal. Like a sh uncomfortable look. I'm still thinking about that though, good boy. I don't really care about Rick getting his teeth fixed. <laughs> yeah, no, this is normal. All it's right. Fine. Uh, Blimmons looks towards the back and says, "Ah, I think I see. I see a quick fix then." You will have. And he just takes his hand away from your mouth and your teeth start to glow a bright yellow light. As he says, Now your smile can light up the night sky. Hell yeah. Oh, no. oh great. Does anyone have a mirror? <laughs> There's a lake. Um, can, I run over, can I run over to the lake real quick? Yeah, if you want to. You just want to run between the buildings and look at the water. Yeah, and I smile into it. Do I see Jamie? Um, you see a 
lot of you just see your all of your teeth it looks like they're just almost connected with how bright the light is beaming off of them hell yeah so i run back to the circle or the square and i'm like i got a saw on the plane now boys and i start shitting my shiny teeth in me <laughs> is that what you were trying to do the whole time <laughs> yes That's awesome. Oh, you're trying to impress people? Yes. Okay. And I'm shining the whole time. <laughs> I, I, feel like I, should have a, I feel like I should have a bandage because my teeth are very shiny. Uh, you would act, actually, I was going to give you advantage, but not for that reason. It's because the moment you start singing, Blemons jumps in and starts dancing a jig to your singing. Go ahead and roll again. All right, first one of those. So you do this performance, and Blemons compliments it by performing a little light show around you as you do it and people are watching you get gather a small crowd they're cheering a few people are clapping uh every word you say light just beams out of your mouth as you're singing uh, it's quite an impressive show uh blemins you should be my opening act and perhaps you should be mine i'll see you at the carnival then Perhaps you will, or perhaps you won't. I'll be here a while longer to continue people on their way, but perhaps we'll meet, perhaps we won't. But I'm afraid the smile you possess won't last as long as you desire, as your teeth start to fade back to normal. Make it permanent. My magics are two things. Illusion and quite deadly. I'm afraid making it permanent would not be an option within my realm. What is Make the... it deadly, then. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's the day like right now? Uh, it's still, uh... Sun's still out. It's about... Year 30? About 6 p.m. right now. Is it, like, yeah, getting a little 30. dark? <clears throat> my yep. clock says 3.45. Sun... This, oh, wait, yo, Sal's correct, actually. That's right, because it's military time. I read that wrong. Um, it is still fairly well lit outside. Dang, okay. Is there still, like, a caravan going through town? Or have okay. they all gone? Occasionally, wagons are rolling through town, always coming from the south. Okay, we um, should really get these beers and get going. I, uh, walk off to Blemons. Can... Can you do fireworks? <laughs> what can I do? Fireworks? Of course. Have you not been paying attention? As he swirls his hand, and this small beam of light starts circling your head and sits in a small circle above you, and a rain of just white er, lights start showering over your head. Oh, my eyes get sparkly. and like, oh, so pretty. <laughs> I just get lost in the moment. He, and it, he actually, he... he plays up to it seeing you're having a you're impressed with it he continues to just make various strips of light and sparkles all around you oh my god i'm just like oh oh my god <laughs> i am at all at this point <laughs> i'm at the mercy of this guy's magic <laughs> i'm never gonna get this beer am i and i just look really sad sitting on my stove I just nudge Baka and I, I walk into the bar. I, I follow on top of Stovey. <laughs> All right. So you guys head uh, back towards the bar. Arthur and Richard, are you following with? Yes. Yeah, I saw Richard leaving. I'm like, oh, okay. Bye. Okay. You guys head over to the Shepherd's Crook. No hesitation. I'm just gonna walk in. Oh yeah, let me give you your stovey. Yeah, let me give you your stove and your rock. Oh my god. We got a packed house tonight. Packed yeah, house? as you I... walk in, you see there's a lot of people in here. It's actually quite loud, and uh, with a lot of people drinking and talking, and you can see uh, Leanner going back and forth serving drinks up, setting them out. Sometimes people get up and go pick up the drinks and head back. With uh, the other dwarf, which you can assume is her husband, is a uh, working very quickly just chopping vegetables has a some stew on just just working fast uh as you I, approach uh, uh, she looks at you all and says 
Oh, hey, you're back. You're back. That's excellent. And I, is that, are you riding my, st st whatever. I, 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 what can I get you? I, uh, I lean up. Is it me or do all these men look the same? And she looks around and Arthur, says, Arthur, that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a, that is a bit racist, lad. They, they look nothing alike. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, a round of beers. A round, round of ales. Aye, aye, a round of ales. And she uh, quickly heads to the tap and starts getting things ready. Uh, Rocky, and you, Rocky says, Boy, make that two points for me. To which Leander says, <laughs> A round of ales and two extra for... Uh, only no, he's is... only a day old. Just one for him. <laughs> I, one for... I, I, I don't even know who... You got a friend coming? I don't care. It's uh, none of my business for now. And she starts pouring more drinks and sets them all across as there's five ales out in front of you. Fantastic. And she hastily goes to grab more food. Uh... I, I drink mine really fast. Oh shit, and I see Sal drinking his fast, and I'm like, fuck, well, I gotta do drink mine fast, so. So, both of you oh, drinking it real fast? I'm yeah. drinking it so fast. That's gotta be Constitution saving throws. Dwayne, have you even had a beer before? This is gonna be great. Oh, this is gonna be so great! <laughs> it's gonna be great! Okay. I'm sorry. Of course, I haven't had a drink before. I, again, I was a bloody immobile rock before you came along but i feel well, like i can down about a good seven all right bud start catching up and i start chugging as well too i'm <laughs> just kind of there with the one and i look around the bar and i see this person i just kind of like in, i'm like interested in the, looking at her yeah she seems to be running around with multiple drinks on a platter she looks like a server hmm uh, I don't Richard, know why I can't stop looking at her. Richard, what did you? What are you rolling for? Um, I told Dwayne because he was like, "Oh, I've drank before," or he hasn't drank before. But I was like, "Well, you're gonna learn today." So I start chugging. Oh, you're chugging. Okay, so yeah, you you flawlessly chug. Uh, but I need you to make a dexterity savings throw. Okay. As you're chugging, you have one eye open looking at Sal. As he's drinking so fast, he actually just starts... It, it goes down the wrong way as he leans forward and just spits out a whole mouth of ale at you. <laughs> but you hastily dodge to the side. Instead, a little bit gets on Arthur. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Do me next. <laughs> Baka, you... <laughs> you just start you can't swallow anymore as you start just gurgling it up a bit as it starts pouring out of your mouth onto your stove then you spit up the rest you were chugging drinking too fast oh my god are you guys all right <laughs> would you would you say i got drunk from chugging an ale Perfect. and oh, failing my constitution save not yet i would say because you were chugging fast and failed that you weren't able to just chug it all of it because of that and you uh I had to spit up a bunch. Do I have any beer left? Um. Yes, yeah, so you can take mine. I chug it. Oh, okay. I'm making another Constitution <laughs> saving throw. <laughs> okay, you actually fully chugged this one, but you are for sure drunk now. You drank this way he too quick. He was such a good boy. <laughs> Oh, I loved me. him. I just keep what? pounding the bar. What's her name again? The waitress. The. You're crying a little bit. Can I get Leander. a napkin? Leander. I um. I lean in and ask Leander who the uh, who's the other waitress walking around. Uh, other waitress. What? What in God's name? Are you making a mess in my damn bar? You two. Easy. <sighs> Look at her like. And you. Uh -huh. If you don't, don't go harassing Ellie unless you need something. Uh, no, no, no. It's just she's quite nice on the eyes right now. That's all. And she's taken. Don't you forget it. Taken by taken. the Lord? Taken by... I'm trying to work here, not strike up a damn conversation about Ellie's relationships. Wait. You want another drink? Question. Yes, Why are there two Richard D. Rosses? Oh, because I cast Mirror Image. 
Oh. Yes, another round for all of us, please. Where's the second rich, Chad? And there's not supposed to be two. Hey, well, yeah, there are two. Me, hell yeah. <laughs> there's Bakaluda. Am I standing on? Wait, her? wait, or, or wait. Was Bakaluda so drunk? Oh, okay. She's been seen. The stove is on top of you. Okay. Well, I'm on top of the stove, so I don't yeah, know what you want. Like, there's I no. Just, I just see no the stove. There's no chair here. Oi, Arthur. You think that Ellie chick's hot? I think she's nice looking. Let me go show you the moves. Wait, did Arthur get us oh, another gosh. drink? Yes, I got you all another round. Well, I saw that Sal chugged his drink, so... Even though I just spit mine up, I gotta... I gotta do it. I loved him! That's okay, Sal. <laughs> they just, like, pat him on the back as they... try and drink. Probably I'm, like, hugging on... Now. I'm hugging I... on my smokestack right now because I'm about to fall off this bitch. Right, when she pats me on the back, I let out a loud belch. <laughs> there. Better out than in. I still need that towel. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, all right, Richard, what are you doing? Ellie, Ellie! You walk up and say, Ellie, Ellie, and immediately Dwayne says, Oh, Ellie, Ellie! And she turns to you and uh, looks uh, around you and says, Um, uh, y y yes? Y huh, yes? What's up, girl? What's up, girl? And she she looks around again past you. I, I'm... Are you, are you a ventriloquist? No, that's my buddy, Dwayne. No, oh, I'm Dwayne. I'm down here, you dumb. She <laughs> oh my God, looks into your so hand rude. and sees you holding a, a rock with its arm kind of hidden under your arm a bit, and then it pulls out and flexes. And she jumps back, actually, and says, Oh, what, 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 what in the... And everyone in the tavern just kind of... They're talking and cheering mumbles down a little bit as they look towards you, and they see a he rock... All she hears is mumbling. Flexing a ar his arm. <laughs> And the, the tavern actually goes... Nobody can understand him. It just mumbles. Goes a, a little bit quiet. And the, they're all staring at you. And Dwayne yells out, What? What? You all want a piece of me? And everyone just hears... <laughs> 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 Hello there, Dwayne. <laughs> Ellie, this is my friend Dwayne. He's a rock. He's hard. As a rock? <laughs> Fucking Dwayne! And oh. over here, I move over, is my buddy Arthur. <laughs> and my buddy Arthur told me that you look, uh... You look easy on the eyes. I, um, I hold my drink and I'm just I starting to... They were, they I hear this and I'm like, I'm just like, nope, 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 <laughs> nope. So Ellie, might I I'm ask you a question? Everyone kind of goes back to their drinking, just intrigued by this weird moving rock with the, the mumbles but they they go back to their business which ellie says um uh, sh sure but i'm i am working right now and we're very busy oh no worries Dwayne, start working for ellie <laughs> Dwayne uh looks at you and says well, wait what you want me you want her to carry me and then i carry a beverage what do you want me to do you go around grab orders and beverages, and then I'll, I'll buy. I'll get you a six pack later tonight. But <laughs> I can just see this now. Excuse me, sir, but you can understand what it's saying. Yeah, you can. Uh, no, it makes a gurgling sound. You must not speak. Frightening, to be honest. You must not speak uh, British. Oi, tell this bimbo I ain't frightening at all. <laughs> yeah, he's just from uh, Northern London. All you hear is horror, 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 <laughs> yeah, That's all you. That is all. all you <laughs> that's all anybody hears. That's, that's anyway. all the rest of you hear. That's right. Dwayne, go grab, go grab the orders for this lady. Ellie, <sighs> Dwayne will take care of your shifts the rest of the night. And I hop on the table and I take out my loot. And I'm like, let me sing you a song about love. And I start going. Here's You're a little ditty about Ellie and Arthur. God, I am walking out. <laughs> Two little humans who know how to purr and i'm just really into the song <laughs> hey, arthur you see arthur get up and covering his face as he walks out of the tavern when you look glass hey, mad at Richard. the candle stealing i'm drunkenly 
and they fell in love while Dwayne handled the tables. I'm just, I'm just like waving my mug back and forth in the air to this song. Make my a, empty ass mug. Make a performance check with advantage, Richard. Hell yeah. You're, you're serenading a bunch of uh, alcohol. Hell yeah, folks. let's go. Every, so. As soon as you start singing, everyone kind of starts waving their mugs. And, and some of them try to just match the tone with you. They don't know what the hell you're saying. But they're just happy. There's some sound coming out that sounds sounds nice. So they're, they're kind of trying to join in. <laughs> uh, I left my mug on the counter. You see it. It's empty because I chugged it. Remember? Yeah, yeah, he just drank all of your. That's why he's drunk right now. He actually drank your your ale. He uh, drank yeah. your ale and the one you gave him. I have I have a sec. Yeah, I have a second one too. Oh, there's I'm a not... there's a free ale on the ground. Or there's gonna... a free ale on there. I'm not gonna chug it, but I I'm gonna drink it. Yo, no, well, no, and I pull on Sal's shoulder. Halfsies. All right, we just. And then like I just hold my my, my mug up to it. So I, I, I fucking pour some, you know, what I think or what Bacaluda might think is half of the ale. I'm drunk, I ain't paying attention. Exactly. <laughs> so what was poured into her cup? Half of the ale that Augie left. Oh, uh, okay. Alright. Now you, you pour some ale. No, just I just drink it normally, I don't chug this one. Okay, you're definitely drunk, but you're maintaining it. But uh, Rocky actually looks up at you, Richard, and says, Wait, so, w w "What do you want me to do? You want me to, you want me to take orders? I can only move because you only, they only got me one arm." Let's pretend like you're a waitress for like five minutes. We're trying to get Arthur laid. That's I not can't... true. He's got little legs. Oh, does he? Have, I thought he had. No, I thought yeah. he only had was one beefy arm. He can, no, no, he can move around. He's got, he has, like, he's got little two legs. little stick legs. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, he's standing on his little stick leg. He says, "All right, fine." And you hear him walking away as he's yelling at these gentlemen. Well, what do you silly bastards want to drink? And uh, as he's walking up, and they sort of just look down at the rock for a moment and then at each other. And uh, Leander's looking over the counter down uh, at the I'm rock, just her. waving its muscly arm in front of like two two people <laughs> as she shouts, "Oh, hey, can someone get the damn pet rock under control?" He's your new waiter. <laughs> I yell at her. Mid song. <laughs> As you say that, one of the gentlemen says, ah, two, two pints. And I twitch the rock. That when they say that, the rock actually walks away and just jumps up on the counter using its muscly arm to fling itself up and just stands there in front of Leander. And somehow, this becomes <laughs> this becomes an event where Leander's getting some drinks and Dwayne starts delivering one at a time, running to these tables and handing them out with this huge arm. Yes! Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we went with the smaller stove from Dwayne. <laughs> so he's he's actively working the tavern right now. Hell yeah. He's making money. So I finish my song and I go, Ellie, your candle's feeling... Love is outside. What do you say? Um, I have a boyfriend. I immediately <laughs> fall on the ground. Passed out. <laughs> you just fall. You, yeah, you fall on the ground just passing out or you just fall on the ground? I just fall on the ground. Um, kind of like an anime. Like, you know, you like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, <laughs> like a, I got gotcha. you. And she just says, just, so, sorry, and just hurries off back to the counter. <laughs> and she she turns, and it looks like she tries to avoid making eye contact. She sees Sal and a uh, halfling sitting on top of a stove that seems to be uh, stove that seems to be moving. Yeah, he screams stovey. <laughs> you haven't done the voice for him once. I'm upset. I've only done it one time. Stove, stovey. <laughs> <laughs> so I build up my courage and I come back in here and I see do I do I see what's going on with Richard and Sal and Baca? Yo, did I get a towel yet? Richard's on the ground twitching. Uh you see Dwayne actually running around with a pint in his hand on his little st stick legs heading and delivering drinks. 
You see Sal looking sort of just out of it, and you see Baka also a little bit out of it. Are you and you want a what now, Baka? <laughs> I need a towel. <laughs> so you ask Leander for a towel? Yeah. Okay, that's it. She's definitely going to shout at you. And she's walking, getting more drinks, saying... Like a but, dish towel. But you want me to what? Wipe you clean? I'm not going to wipe your arse while you're here, too. Hold your damn liquor, lass! And she throws a dish towel at you. Um... <laughs> I don't know if I'm really going to be able to catch this right now. Oh, All you right, want to make I'll it a contest come. to catch? Yeah, go ahead and make a dexterity check with this oh, advantage. Oh, Jesus. All right. Or you can auto fail Wait, so if you want to fail. Is this is this an acrobatics? What is this? This is dexterity. Dexterity Just ability dex? check. This is gonna be great. No, I'm gonna pass this with flying colors because I'm fucking pro. Yeah, you kind of just reach your hand out and clench your hand, hoping it grabs onto it, and it, it kind of works out. This child lands on it, and wraps around it a bit, and you grab it. Hell yeah! I start cleaning up while still holding my other beer in my hand. I just I I walk behind Baka and sound like I, I don't ask I just look. This is why you why your girlfriend's over there. Yeah, I, I'm like uh, Sally was I, such a good boy. He was such a good boy. And then I take a a big swig to that. At least somebody gets it. <laughs> I'm gonna walk over to this other chick. <laughs> No, I don't want anything, Dwayne. I have beer still. <laughs> Thank you, Dwayne. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're probably cussing us out. <laughs> Just like so nice to Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne's like. You're <laughs> <laughs> probably like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I'm just like, thanks, Dwayne. That's you the don't... nicest thing anything that anybody's ever said to me. I appreciate it. Nice rock. What a nice rock. You're such, such a, a nice boy. rock. You're such a good boy. And I take another drink. <laughs> I um. <laughs> Hi, Hudson. Yes, you're a good boy. I'm just gonna sit back down and just sit over here. Okay. Uh, Jamie, I approached this lady. Um, how old does she look about? Uh, she looks, uh, maybe, like, early 40s. Wait, where'd Rick go? He's so, right I I'm feeling a little rejected because the other girl said she had a boyfriend. I go up to this lady, I'm like, hello, I'm Richard, and you are? For some reason, he just disappeared completely off of my... Oh, I got you. Hold on. I'm not to fix that. Screen. Like oh, right. never mind. I see it. Right. Okay. Yeah, I there see it. Those two right. witches, remember? She uh, takes a, a sip of her ale and uh, <laughs> kind of just turns her head half towards you and says, Still thirsty. Another pint, if you will. And your name is Another Pint, if I will? Since when did the help start asking for names around here? And she turns to you and looks up at you a little frustrated. Can we Mind if this? I play you a song? Um, it's for my friend, Arthur, over there. He's a man of the candle. We're busy getting saying. drunk. Yeah, but can we hear this conversation? I mean, it's on the other side of the bar, Sal. Yeah, I don't think you could hear this from there, because it's, it's pretty loud in here right now, with all these people talking. <laughs> I just look over there and be like, I lean down to Baka, and I say, that lady looks like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like... <laughs> Cheers his mug and then take another <laughs> swig. <laughs> she says, uh, Oh, you're you're not a waiter, you're entertainment. You just played that song. It sound, sounded all right. Not as festive but, as I would hope. Might I play you a song? Uh, she looks to the man across from the table and says, What do you think? Should we have a song played for us? To which the man looks up and says, well, I don't see why not. Sure, play a, man, the more songs, the merrier. I cast enthralling performance. <laughs> All right, what does that do? I'm going to post it real quick. Uh, one second. <laughs> Starting at the third level, you can change your performance with seduct charge your performance with seductive fey magic. 
If you perform for at least one minute, you can attempt to inspire wonder in your audience by singing, reciting a poem, or dancing. At the end of performance, choose a number of humanoids within six feet of you who watched and listened to all of it, up to a number equal to your charisma modifier. Each target must succeed on a wisdom savings throw against your spell save DC, or be charmed by you. While charmed this way, the target idolizes you, speaks growingly of you, and anyone who talks around it, and it hinders anyone who opposes you. Although, okay, I got it. All right, so you play a song. What's it sound like? I'm gonna. Well, let me know. I'm gonna specifically charm her, uh, the old dude right there, and the hot chick over here. Wait, which old dude? <laughs> The one sitting off to our right. Oh, the shepherds? Yeah, one of the shepherds. <laughs> it's one of the guys we saved his life. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, so go ahead and make... Uh... Let's see how good it sounds first. The enthralling performance will go off no matter what, but go ahead and make a performance check. Okay, it sounds amazing right. as you start playing this song, and I'm gonna make it's um, <laughs> it's "Hips Don't Lie" by Shakira. Oh my god! Like Sing it. Come Sayama, bonita, Mikasa, Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> Where these like dexterity throws? <laughs> like who crit failed? <laughs> who crit failed? <laughs> so who are the four again? Because I went from left to right. Show me the four. No, there were three. Oh, there's only three? Yeah, I'm only mm -hmm. doing three. <laughs> okay, well, the first one would have been her. Uh, the second one would have been him. And the third would have been her. Yes. Oh, she crit failed. It's beautiful. Yes. When, when your song ends, the old man up here actually yells out, oh, Amazing! Amazing! That was young man again! Uh, the woman over here yells out, Again! Again! We want more! Play more! And the woman in front of you just looks up at you, and she has her hand on her chin, and she's smirking and says, Charming music, huh? How plain. Oh, well, fuck. Oh. Well, would you say your charms, and I give her a wink? I would say using your magics to tempt those around you, even against their wills, a little beneath most people. If she but... crit failed, she wouldn't fucking know. So, I will remind you that even on a roll or a crit fail, there are certain characters and creatures that are immune to the charm effect. Well, I guess Arthur isn't getting laid tonight. <laughs> uh, we Arthur, we tried. I, um, Rick tried. I just, I scream out, thank you, Rick. Please come back to the table. <laughs> I kind of just, like, look sheepishly at her. I'm like, I'll see you later. And I really kind of run away my... She, uh, I go up to the old man. <laughs> she raises an eyebrow at you as you walk away. And I look at the old man, and I'm like, you like that? <laughs> he, lo he looks up at you, he's like, oh yeah, of course, I want more, I want more. But before uh, before you say anything, I'm, I, need to, I need to tell you as Richard D. Ross, since mm -hmm. you're aware of what you just casted was a, a magic effect that can charm folks, you mm -hmm. find it incredibly odd that that woman was not affected whatsoever you're almost positive it should have affected her yeah i'm uh i'm pretty scared to be honest with you like she reminds me of like the school librarian who would like get mad at you for like whispering <laughs> she's like the, the the teacher from matilda mm -hmm. Ooh, look so he fucking uh. <laughs> he fucking nose Are you trying out. to? Are you trying to, Jamie? Uh, are you trying to say Talk I should up. go more towards that? No, no, no. I'm just insinuating and that he, as a player that. and as a character, you would immediately know that she is much more than what she seems. I would like to chug the rest of my drink now. Wait, hold up. I rewind those thirty seconds. I don't talk to the old man. I go back up to this lady, and I'm like, <laughs> or I was there the whole time. I'm like, you seem a lot more than what you appear like, lass. Oh, did you get that by me not falling under your charm? Normally, I don't have to cast magic to charm when I take a sip of my drink. I see, and I would agree with you as well. Your performance was enlightening. The side effects, just not as much. How were you able to tell I used magic? 
she smiles a bit at you and says, Why do you think I could tell anything? Maybe I'm just being coy. Oh no, I can see it in your eye. She smiles and uh, and uh, says to you, I may dabble in the arcane arts myself. Dabble? She smiles and just raises one finger slightly next to her and just twirls a little bit. And, and as soon as she does, you can see the gentleman behind her actually just his expression go blank as he raises his arm up and just slowly starts waving at you and says, yes, I dabble. Uh, I, I look I... over, I look over to, uh, Dwayne. No, can like... I see the, can I see the guy waving? Uh, you drunk currently? Yeah, I'm drunk. Yeah, you see a guy kind of waving at Richard. I distance. want to wave back at the guy because I think he's waving at me. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. His arm just slowly goes back down. <laughs> oh, Am I, I able look... to see the conversation Rick and the lady are taking? You are so too far away it. to be able to hear the conversation in a loud tavern. You're popular. No, see, see. I want to see it. Oh, yeah, no, you can. You're popular. You can kind of see them talking over there. Okay. I uh, look over at Dwayne and I'm like, I also dabble. And I give her a wink. <laughs> no. To which Dwayne says. <laughs> I don't know about dabbling with this one, mate. She's giving me some creepy vibes. <laughs> to which she looks down at the rock and says, What a rude little token. You can understand them? And she looks back up at you and says, Indeed I can. So that means you speak Infernal as well. She uh, smiles again and just gives a, a slight nod. All right. Dwayne, an autograph for the last. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, oh, you got it. And he hops up onto you, climbing up a bit like with his arm onto your belt and then reaching into your pack, dipping his finger in that ink again and taking a piece of parchment out and just starts scribbling away. Can I get your name at least? <laughs> and as he's scribbling away, um, she looks up at you and says, Silna. So then I, I grab her hand and I be like, and I go to like give it a kiss. I'm like, may I offer you a kiss to your palm? Of course you can. And I do it. And you and kiss I her end palm. up on Succubus Island. And she looks, uh, she looks, she has a satisfied <laughs> expression on her face when you kiss her, uh, kiss her hand. As uh, immediately Dwayne holds out a piece of parchment. Again, it just this time it just looks like loops to get larger and larger <laughs> as they go off the paper. And he says, I think I've gotten better at it. There you go. And holds it out. <laughs> to which she uh, looks at the paper and just slowly grabs it and looks at it and just says, Charming. Oh. oh. One or, quick uh, thing. You, oh, yes? I throw a lollipop on top of the paper. Because <laughs> I gave him three. <laughs> yeah. You put the lollipop paper? Okay. Uh, she yeah. uh, takes the paper and the lollipop. She holds the lollipop for a moment looking at it. And you can see her uh, eyes suddenly shift. They look normal for a moment. Then they start glowing a bright blue very briefly. And uh, they revert to normal shortly after. And her eyes kind of just dart over towards the bar area. And she smiles and just puts it in her bag and says, A gift and a autograph from your rock. Lovely. Um, I come over and I put my hand on Richard's shoulder Hey, are you ready to go? As I point over at Sal and Baka. Hold up, Arthur. I want you to meet someone. It's mm -hmm. been a pleasure, Selene. I'm not walking. Can <laughs> she, I uh... Beer now? She sort of furrows her brows you walk away and just quietly say, says, Silna. And I look at her and I bow and I said, <laughs> nice to meet you. And I walk away. And she just nods know at you. Spell Silna. Silna. Hot old chick. Arthur, have you met this gentleman? I remember him. We saved these. We saved him there when we first got here, correct? Well, it was your date of the night, and I give Arthur a pat on the back, and I keep walking. 
<laughs> he, uh, <laughs> the old man looks up at you and says, oh, I, uh, I, I remember you. You did, you helped us with our, our livestock. We still appreciate that. Yeah, how's everything going so far? You guys, you and your buddy holding up all right? Well, it was going great, but I'm afraid recently things have become quite dreadful. Oh, quite dreadful indeed. I give a sad expression. What do you mean, dreadful? Well, we just heard one of the best performances of our life, and he won't play again. He just walked away. Oh, look. <laughs> we will come back, and I promise you that he will play a better performance. Oh, please do, if you can convince him. Will do. He will do anything for love. Wink. But he won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, I look around and I see Ellie and I just, like, walk off. Hey, Arthur, come here. And I turn around. <laughs> what did that old man want? Um, he... He fell in love with your music and he wants you to play again. Hmm. Okay, let me go talk to him real quick. Are you just gonna leave me here? So, you want me to play again, old man? <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> just like, like awkwardly just you. We're having we a great felt, time. At like, the we can't hear anything, but we're hearing all, like, we're watching all this shit go down and just making up our own story. <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> Do you think Rick's gonna bang that old man? Guaranteed. I'm you, down. You approach the old man a again. <laughs> hey. What if I can offer you, you a deal? I'll play again, but you gotta do something for me. Uh, w w w what, yes, well, what, what is it you would like me to do? Steal a candle from the church next door. St well, steal a candle? I suppose I could. You did help us, and you, you're very, you're very kind, so if it will help you, sure. Yes. Oh I need you to steal a candle. <laughs> and bring, bring it to that priest-looking guy over there. And don't he, say a word. He leans past you and says, and points, uh, that one, the one with the, just standing next to the <laughs> lady who seems to be staring at the back of your head, not even blinking. Oh, yeah, that, that's my date. Don't worry about that. I need you to take a candle from the church next door and give it to that gentleman over there. And then I'll play you whatever song you want. Oh, oh right now. Very well. I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Which Stop, is chop. His friend uh, puts his hand on the, uh, his shoulder and says, w what, what are you doing? You, you're going to go steal from the church for him. Uh, he helped us, but that's, that's blasphemous, is it not? To which he says, not hearing that song again is blasphemous. Get off me. And just brushes his hand away <laughs> and gets <laughs> up and that? starts heading towards the door. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Fuck <laughs> you. Alright, sorry about that. Where was I? So anyway, I was fighting off five wild beasts with my bare hands and my abs are showing. Oh, hello, Arthur. <laughs> Richard. Yes? I just shake my head. Don't... Don't leave me. Hey, Dwayne, <laughs> another, uh... Another round of pints on the house. How about that? You gotta pay for all that? Uh, Leander actually interjects and says, Another round for a silver apiece. Aye. And to which Dwayne, uh, well, to everyone else, just... Oh. But it's, In that uh, case, I chugged the rest of my drink, goddammit. Yeah, chug the rest of your drink. You keep fucking ignoring me. I, did, I didn't hear you, honestly. That's the first time I've heard you. <laughs> I said it three Make times. a constitution savings throw for me again. Yeah. Okay, you, I, um, you you're still drunk, but you are you are struggling at the moment. I scream out to Sal. Sal, he was such a good boy. He was such a good boy. Such a good boy. Finish that drink. I get a chuckle. Finish that drink. Here comes Arthur. What's so fucking funny, Arthur? I love <laughs> you. Every time we keep saying he's such a good boy, Hudson comes up and sits in my lap. <laughs> He's such a good boy. <laughs> All right, Sorry, so Hudson's my dog. 
So you guys just kind of just forget Richard. You just going around regaling everybody, telling them all the awesome things you've done while after you're trying to not be embarrassed by them. Is that what you two are doing? I'm also yeah. talking to this chick. I'm like flirting with her and stuff because she's charmed. I don't know Wait. how I got attached. So did we get another round of drinks? You got it. You want another round of drinks too? No, did we? Do you do you want another Richard round of drinks? Richard said. Richard said. Richard did say that, but that, I'm afraid that doesn't will it. Leanna shouted for a silver each if you're paying for another round. I'm really sad now. Find a silver each. Hell yeah. No, she, you see her actually scribble something down after you say that, Richard. She hastily starts making more drinks, a lot of them as quick as she can, and just starts laying them out on the counter. And every time a drink goes out, you see Dwayne hop up and just grab one and just run to someone <laughs> random and just set it on their table. <laughs> on my tab. Just this round. <laughs> you uh, just see her kind of just her eyes dart to you, but quickly go back to what she's doing. Can we and get yeah, another round? Yeah, another drink is set in front of you and uh, Sal. Sal, finish that drink. Oh, I finished it. I just didn't chug it. All right, I am gonna go sit back with Sal and Baka. Sally was such a good boy. He was such a good boy. I just keep patting Sal on the I back miss while, him. while I taking miss him big swigs of my drink. I just walked in. You barely knew him. No, but he looked friendly. Tell me, what was he like? He loved your scratches. Oh, what was his name? Soldier. That's such a handsome name. <laughs> uh, that's so great. Stoic. I'm brave. I'm, sh I'm sure we'll get to see Soldier again. He's such a good boy. He I'm was such a good boy. Drinking the beer. I'm, I'm so upset. He's crying into his beer. You just Soldier. make him remember a little remember salty. The the ear scratches and the, the bowl of soup, and it, you're almost positive from his, his last look. He wanted to come so badly, but just he just chose to go with his pack, and you just feel that crushing, that, that jagged point in your heart. Despair. It's a story. <laughs> All right, Richard, do you want to talk to the lady, or you just kind of... Are you kind of just back and forth? And oh, you we're flirting actually... with each other, and she's charmed. Yeah, she she's so. she's into whatever you're saying right now. Which I'm her, gonna burn her up. Her companion actually up? looks uh, a little oddly at both of you, but he seems a bit drunk too, so he's kind of just watching. He's not saying anything. Um, I ask her if she wants to come upstairs. <laughs> oh God. Uh, to which she uh, she just smiles at you and just takes your hand. Oh Heck yeah. But here's the thing. I don't do it when they're charmed, so I remove the charm effect from her. <laughs> and uh, she's no longer charmed. She kind of blinks twice and uh, looks at you and raises an eyebrow and says, what, 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 what am I, why am I holding your hand? You wanted to come upstairs, no? Um, I'm all, all right. I, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm all right. Alright, then I go back to the bar defeated and I start drinking. You see, you see Richard lose all of his gusto as he goes back to the bar, his eyes half shut and a frown on his face as he sits down and just starts drinking the ale that's on the counter. They only Richard. like me when I'm performing. He was such a good boy, Richard. Now you know how it feels, Rick. <laughs> I got turned down. We all suck. <laughs> And I, uh, I think that's a good spot to call it for the evening. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Having a pity is party there, at is the there an old the man bar. who comes back to the bar anytime soon? Um, actually, if y'all want to resolve that, uh, we well, yes. no, I actually that that technically is resolved. Um, hanging out again for even another thirty minutes. The uh, the old man is not back yet. Oh boy. We it out for another 30 minutes. <laughs> you you, you want to wait another 30 minutes just hanging at the bar bar counter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another 30 minutes go by. <laughs> and you see this old man come back in. <laughs> he, he's looking around nervously as he comes in, as he, as he sees you and hurriedly rushes to the counter and says, 
I was I was sneaky as I could be. There were a few a few servant boys in there still monitoring the place, but Merrickson wasn't around, and I I I I got one. Look, I got one. And he holds a half burnt candle out to you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, give it, we'll give it to him. I didn't want it. Oh yes, it was for you. Um, wait, are you are you a father as well? I am. Uh, what, father uh, Arthur? Yes. Oh, yes. I, I remember now. You were yes. You you helped us. We, I, did we have this conversation? Or, no, no, no matter. Here. I, I know this is important. I, uh, and he holds out a half used candle to you. I uh, close his hands and I say I appreciate the offer and I and I worship this candle to pr to protect you on your on your path. Well, uh, thank you. I. Oh, perhaps. Perhaps this was a lesson after all by by you then. And he looks back to you, Richard. And I, I, I understand your message. And now I'm I'm ready to receive my reward. And he pulls up a stool right next to you and sits. Alright. And I take out my loot and I play him another song. Now I think that's a good spot to go out on. Those are good boys! You play a beautiful song in front of him and the tavern's cheering and clapping again and celebrating. Uh, you even see uh, the woman over here smiling and kind of bobbing her head a little bit to your song. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna call it for the evening. Oh my! <laughs> you guys in the uh, in taverns are an adventure on itself, huh? <laughs> that could be like a twenty-hour-long series. It that really could. could. If, if, if y'all are into that, that that could be. It could just be. The, the Salmon Circus and Taverns or whatever you want to be. We can just have a tavern life. <laughs> this is why we should have been taverns. In, this is why we tried to be taverns and tieflings. There's, there's, a, no there's tiefling. a critical flaw in that name <laughs> at the very end. That's the are, joke. Are you going to tell me that tieflings never go to taverns? Yeah, Jamie? yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Of course they do, but it's like... Well... It's like Malcolm in the middle and there's no Malcolm, you know? It's like, wait, wait, wait what is this? Well, we're That's playing Dungeons little... and Dragons and there have been... No dragons. That's... Nor dungeons. And we haven't even seen one dungeon. I cannot argue with this, but I assure you <laughs> that in the future, things are coming your way. <laughs> oh, my. I don't know. Well, Stoby's kind of sticky now. I got to clean that up. <coughs> you guys, you guys brokered a, a peace, actually, between the people without... Without some intervention, that could have gone way different. At the very beginning, it was almost going to go way different. But thanks to quick acting and, and thinking, you guys were able to make sure things stayed okay. So it looks like it might work out after all. So, good job. Good job on that. I don't trust that Tillis fella. He seemed a little, a little, uh, a little off, right? A little, a little fishy. I trust Flame. But yeah, yeah, Flame actually came around. Still crazy how it turned out that way, but yeah, Fl Flame was the one who spoke for the uh, a live stream wolves and men, and it may be happening now. But you guys got bigger fish to fry soon. You're celebrating for now, but uh, what's your next goal? What do you want to do? I'm gonna put a dagger through Blumens' fucking face. <laughs> no. I I sincerely hope that you try. No. I want to get my creativity back. I, ha I swear to God, I will get hold person. So uh, so one of you uh, who lost something wants to get it back. I guess the rest are you uninterested in retrieving what was taken. Look, look again, I <laughs> no, gained I something, okay? So I don't know what you're talking about. Well, uh, hopefully perhaps Sal can convince his team that he desires his creativity back, which is kind of sad. That is a sad thing to lose. So it's up For to you, Sal. Yeah. You can convince your your group to to somehow per, uh, get that back, however that is. Which I kind of uh, wish Ellie did had a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, that's a it's a small town, not a lot of people here, but most of them know each other, and the the newcomers and whatnot. Unfortunately, there weren't a lot of a lot of women in the the area, at least stopping at the tavern. But uh, slim pickings at the moment, but that may open up in the future too. So we'll see. Uh, besides all that, any final comments on tonight's? Uh, Mega mega roleplay session. No fighting. Uh, 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 it's very uh, uh, rude thing uh, uh, to say, uh, uh, but I actually agree uh, uh, with Arthur completely. 
I didn't know, I, know. I didn't know Dwayne spoke infernal. <laughs> yeah, actually I wanted to ask about that, Richard. Uh <laughs> is Dwayne's language infernal? It is. I feel okay. like it makes uh uh, cause I, I was like, kind of look at my character sheet and I, for whatever reason, picked that I speak infernal. So uh, it kind of just kind of fit well together. I don't know. Well, that was kind of fun. Okay. In that case, uh, he mumbles still, but you can make, people can make out the mumbling. So if anyone else can speak infernal, they can understand it as well. Is that all right? Yep. For instance, everyone else will hear, oh, dear, mop, kiss, mop, mop, what, 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 which means, oi, let him get it himself. So there'll be a lot more of that, okay? Yep. I, think, I, I don't know. I thought it was like a nice, like, um, what's it called? Uh, touch. Nice touch for your yeah. character. A nice touch, yeah. I agree. Maybe uh, maybe when someone else is around, they can understand Infernal, like you have just met, can understand it as well. So that'll be interesting how that plays out. I'm glad y'all have these extra creatures with you. A huge stove and a... Some of us do. British I was going to be really upset if the wolf did came along with Sal. It's like, wait, wait, Rick has a has a pal, <laughs> Baka has a pal, Sal has a pal. I have nothing. Well, actually, actually, I think both of you could. Well, maybe, maybe not Arthur. I but, can make a skeleton pal, <laughs> but yeah, that's the really opposite way. <laughs> that's that's true. I was gonna say you have the ability to create something. I don't know what it is, but Sal, I'm almost positive you can get the ability to find familiar. So you could actually create your own creature. I have that. Oh, and you could do it anyhow. Well, there you go. You should make Sal a familiar. Mm. So that way he can use it. I can cast animal friendship. That could work too. Maybe find a random animal and just cast that on him. Maybe a not intelligent one, so that way it I don't know, it work out a little bit better. No, we're determined to get that wolf. You can always go back to the wolf cave. That is an option. But that is where we're going to wrap up everything. And I'm going to go ahead and say this has been a successful one-shot series. You have actually completed fully now um, a Wild Sheet Chase and the Wolves of Welton. Both of them since you brokered that piece. So good job. Good job on that. And the, and the zombie guy. The zombie guy. That's true. But that was, those were... Uh, were those, those weren't these characters, were they? Yes, they were. Really? Yeah. Yep. All four of that them? That was the first D&D, &D, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was Horrid Havel's Cross, actually. Yeah, your first introduction was a bunch of dead people and zombies and stuff, so very, very gritty start, but it's it's eased up quite a bit. And what, what's up, Richard? Oh, no, I said Andragos was there for a second. Oh, that, that's right, Andragos was there, but he um, did not mesh with y'all's goals at the start. It ended up being uh, the group versus Dragos, which is never, never oh any good. Oh my god. But next session is going to take a bit to come, because I have some setting up to do, but next session we are officially starting the Witchlight campaign, which I think is called the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. So I'm expecting you players to pursue that campaign, damn it, all right? Get your, get your things back that were stolen. That's the goal. That's y'all's goal now. Oh, do I have to? You have to. If I'm setting up all that content, you absolutely have to go to the carnival. So. Well, I mean, I'll go, but... I mean, again, I didn't lose anything. We don't have to reclaim. It's more of a way to get you there. You know what I mean? I mean, I just want to go because of the carnival. That's, that's fine, too. All right. Anyhow, everyone out there on YouTube, Twitch, thanks for watching. We do appreciate it. We do this every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Central. We will not be meeting probably for the next... God, I don't know. It might take a... I want at least a month to get everything ready because I want to have it all ready instead of just rushing at the last second. We will be streaming on Wednesday night still doing random games and stuff. I think I talked with Sal and Baka about that already. Uh, Richard and Arthur, you're welcome to join as well. We're going to be doing some random Steam stuff here and there. Just fucking around, but I'll be building a campaign otherwise. Uh, I also stream every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central on uh, for the Avernus campaign. I have another group that's the uh, pretty much polar opposite of this one. You got your uh, your happy, you know, make do, perform, seduce, have a good time group. Then you have our gritty, wandering hell, dark, deep group. So we, we got a yin and yang thing going on there. Could you imagine if our group wandered into hell? <laughs> It'd be utter chaos. It probably would be. You guys actually might make three demon friends while you're there, though, so I don't know. Hell yeah, we'd be best <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. I'll hang with some demons. One of them needs to be called... 
Oh, dang it, I lost the name. Oh, well. Dwayne. Dang it, the uh, demon. Dwayne the demon, yeah. Dwayne the demon. Dwayne I, I want. I want an imp named Ictib. An <laughs> imp named Ictib? I don't know, it's possible. In Avernus, you could easily make a deal with a devil to assist you. It's just, you know, they always try to collect a little more than they, they want, they deserve, I should say. No, no, I wouldn't even use that word. Collect more than they should ever get. Yeah, we'll put it that I way. I feel like we'd be more... I feel like they'd get tired of our shit. <laughs> Maybe. They're a, lot, they're a lot quicker to uh, attack than uh, anything y'all have met here so far. So We're talking about hell, though, so what do you expect, you know? Um, the last... Oh, the dogs going crazy at each other. The, the, the last thing I wanted to say was we uh, also do a Thursday night show. Yes. Most of the time. It's called Scrying, Not Scrying. It's kind of like a podcast. We just talk about whatever. Um, our favorite topics or whatever. You guys bring them in the chat. You two players, if you want to participate by all means um well pretty much whatever just give our opinions on that otherwise we have some topics we roll through about some stuff that's happening or what's your favorite ice cream or you know just what the fuck ever it's just a fun time come hang out we drink we chill it's a good time vanilla vanilla is <laughs> talk okay you little racist lalafell fucking boring ass little... vanilla little... why don't you go play a human in a fantasy game why don't you stop being racist for 10 seconds <laughs> against my favorite race in the game because my fucking husband could be a beautiful Lalafell like me. You're Pete. I'm and the only one who defends half the people. Of the group and you guys turned on me. I said these Lalafells <laughs> are chill. I like them. You got yeah. Listen to listen to the listen to vanilla ice cream over there. What, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I didn't deserve that at all. Trying to. You know, we're not getting back into this. Not getting back into this right now. I went out there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah, have a good one. Bye. Bye. I love you. Bye. Say it back. Have a good one. <laughs> Y'all take care now. Alright, we should be... Hold on. Here we go.